In previous videos, we've looked into the deeds of some of World War II's most heroic soldiers and medics. Now, we're climbing into the cockpit to fly beside some of the most heroic pilots to grace the fiery skies of the Second World War. Don't forget, this is part two of a two-parter, and if an aerial ace from your country doesn't appear in this second part, they may have been in the first. Another thing to be aware of is that I've not included every heroic aerial deed in this video, just what I think are the most epic ones. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. We're starting off part two with a bang with Richard Dick Ira Bong. Yes, Dick Bong, who was promoted to Major Dick Bong in 1944. Bong was born in Wisconsin and maintained an interest in flying from an early age, building models and such. In college, he put down his red cup and enrolled in a civilian pilot training program, and a couple of years later, in May 1941, he enlisted in the USAAC Aviation Cadet Program, where his mad skills were recognized. Less than a year after that, he was a pilot. Then he learned to fly the Lockheed P-38 Lightning, a twin engine in which he would become America's top World War II ace and an utter menace to the Japanese. In June 1942, Bong was slapped on the wrist and grounded after flying low over a civilian property and being accused of looping the Golden Gate Bridge with three other rascals. Bong's mad skills couldn't be ignored, however, and in November, he was assigned to a squadron in Port Moresby, New Guinea, claiming his first aerial victory over a Japanese Zero in the Battle of Bunagona. Mid-1943, Bong took out four more Japanese craft, and then he went on to leave the US where he met a lady friend. Returning to the fight in 1944, he named his P-38 after her, Marge, and then shot down plane after plane before taking leave again. When he took to the sky in the Philippines campaign, Bong brought his kill count up to 40, breaking the American records of World War I. Like boy-faced Luftwaffe ace Erich Hartmann, Bong liked it up close and personal, taking out foes from headbutt range and eating their debris. Unfortunately for Dick Bong and his wife, yes, he did in fact marry Marge and the woman, not the plane, his permanent leave, which he was awarded in January 1945, turned into permanent sleep later that year. The aircraft he was test flying malfunctioned and went up in flames. Bong was too close to the ground to deploy his parachute and he crashed onto the earth with the remnants of his plane. A speed demon in his youth, James Johnny Edgar Johnson went on to become the British Royal Air Force's highest scoring ace, though not before his applications were twice rejected with the RAF. With his third attempt in August 1939 accepted, Johnny flew in all sorts of offensive over Nazi-occupied Europe, slicing the sky in the Dieppe Raid, the Battle of Normandy and the Battle of the Bulge, as well as in many other crucial operations. His first aerial victory was in June 1941, where he blasted a German BF-109 from the cockpit of a Supermarine Spitfire. After this, his KD ratio began to steadily ascend into legend status. In August, the RAF were outnumbered 3-1 to one by the Luftwaffe over France, and the RAF bounced a portion of the German BF-109s, breaking their formation into a chaotic mess of dogfighting planes. Johnny knew he had to escape this metal storm, so he dove out of it, giving three BF-109s opportunity to attack. Quick and daring, however, Johnny escaped, taking one of those BF-109s out as he did. Early in 1943, Johnny painted his initials upon and flew his Spitfire EN-398. A wing commander at this point, he implemented new, safer tactics for aerial combat, hating and often abandoning ground attacks. His Finger 4 formation facilitated major victories for his wing in July 1943, earning the wing nickname Wolfpack. Johnny made sure to see that his KD continued to steadily climb, using his preferred technique of panicking enemy aircraft with intense fire and then knocking them out of the sky one by one. If the RAF had rejected Johnny's application a third time back in August 1939, 
the RAF would have been down 34 confirmed individual victories claimed by the man, as well as the many other victories he shared with the men flying by his side. Johnny survived World War II and went on to fly in the Korean War. He died at 85 from cancer. Like Richard Bong in that he also got into flying because of model aircraft, and like Luftwaffe pilot Eilich Hartmann with his intimate fighting style, George Frederick Buehling was an aggressive pilot with the eyes and trigger finger to back it up. Unlike Johnny however, Buehling wasn't a team player, and this, atop him not wanting to sink pints and scorched tobacco, made him quite unpopular with his fellow pilots and superiors. While he later became the Falcon of Malta, he was first of all named Screwball. While Canadian, it seems all Buehling cared about was getting into that cockpit. Rejected by the Royal Canadian Air Force, he tried to join the Finns and then the Brits. The latter accepted him. He mastered running and gunning and he claimed his first aerial victory in May 1942, turning a German FW-190 into hot metal and fire. He then destroyed another German fighter without permission, cementing his reputation as a screwball. Buehling was then shipped to Gibraltar where he flew in the defense of Malta. Over the islands, he wasted several Italian craft claiming acehood on the 10th of July. On the 17th, Björling went ham, taking out some of Italy's and Germany's best pilots and bringing his count up to eight. In August, he was shot down himself, though he managed to survive by executing a successful belly landing. Throughout his time tearing up the skies of Malta and shedding the name Screwball, Björling was shot down four times. He also survived when the B-24 ferrying him to Britain crashed into the sea. He was actually on his way there to recover after being shot down and hospitalized already. Björling then took 27 kills back with him to Canada, where he was transferred to the Royal Canadian Air Force. He upped his count a little more, though flying abreast the Canadians, his victories weren't enough to mask his lack of discipline and abrasive personality, and Björling was grounded after taking his last kill from the sky over France. He was then honorably discharged, having stacked up 31 individual kills and just one shared kill. Buehling, again wanting only to be in the cockpit, was flying for the Israeli Air Force in 1948 when he crashed and died. Before his demise, he never quite adjusted to civilian life. He liked flying and ending lives too much. How's this for a nickname? Ivan the Terrible. This guy, Ivan Nikitovich Koshetov, was one of the highest scoring Soviet aces of World War II, and that's if we're going with his confirmed victories, which are just over half of the victories he claimed himself. As it was with many pilots, Ivan was no Neanderthal before the cockpit, graduating from a chemical technical school in 1940 and from Chugovyesk Military Air School the year after. Fortunately for the Nazis, the air school kept Ivan on as an instructor for two years before finally releasing him. Ivan's debut was the Battle of Kursk, early in July 1943, where he shredded a German Stuka. By the 16th, he'd more than earned his acehood, having snatched up eight victories. Ivan flew over Soviet fronts in the iconic Lavochkin LA-7, which he considered to be the best fighter to carve out the skies of World War II, and in which he claimed to have reached speeds of 700 kilometers per hour. Ivan made good use of deflection shooting, though he also developed a taste for getting half up the enemy's exhaust before unleashing his Soviet load. After he mastered this, he became truly terrible, making an absolute mess of the Luftwaffe. His killstreak spiked over the Dnieper River where over 10 days he accumulated 11 kills. And he just kept going, earning his first Hero of the Soviet Union at 20 aerial victories and another two by March 1945. By the end of the war, Ivan boasted 62 confirmed individual kills, but he himself said, this figure requires revision. I reckon that my personal score is actually in excess of 100. Surviving World War II wasn't enough. Ivan served in Korea, commanding a fighter air division, though not being allowed to enter combat himself. He then sat behind a desk, tending to Air Force paperwork and dreaming of the days when he made the Luftwaffe pilots soil their trousers. 
Stanisław Skalski embodied Polish ferocity in the German invasion of Poland in 1939, though he also exhibited a softer side, which I think stands out more than the fact that he was the first Allied ace in World War II, having claimed six victories between the 1st and 16th of September alone. After shooting down a German HS-126, Skalski landed aside the wreckage, captured the crew, and then bandaged those wounded before delivering them to an ambulance. Imagine literally landing and getting out of your plane to help an enemy that just blitzkrieg their way into your country. What a guy. The next day, Skalski was evacuated to Romania. He boarded a ship and, using Beirut as a stepping stone, eventually got to France. Early in 1940, Skalski sailed to Great Britain, staying in a camp for Polish pilots before being assigned to the RAF and chopping up the Luftwaffe in the Battle of Britain. Already engaged with the German Messerschmitt, Skalski was flanked by a BF-109 and his plane went up in smoke. Burnt and otherwise wounded, he evacuated, losing consciousness in the process. He woke sometime after in a beetroot field and the Canadians tended to him. Recovering, Skalski went on to become the commander of a Polish squadron in March 1942, flying sorties over France before taking charge of another Polish unit and then a British RAF squadron, which he led in the invasions of Sicily and Italy. No other Pole had commanded any RAF units at that point. Overall, Skalski gunned down between 18 and 22 German and Italian planes, though for all his success, the poor guy was arrested on false charges of espionage after the war and sentenced to death in Poland. Thankfully, this charge was swapped for a life sentence and then, in 1965, he was released. Skalski joined the military again and remained in it until retirement. Some 20 years after retiring, he met with one of the German pilots he'd rescued back in 1939. Some stories have a happy ending, sort of. A naval cadet in his youth, Adolf Heisbert Milan became known as Sailor Milan to his fellow pilots. Like Canadian George Buelling, Africana South African Sailor Milan was a British Dominion pilot in the British Royal Air Force, though Sailor volunteered for the RAF after serving in the British Royal Naval Reserve. Sailor was announced to pilot early in 1937 and in September 1939, literally hours after war was declared, Sailor saw some action in the sky. Only the enemy planes weren't enemies at all, but another squadron of the RAF. Sailor's squadron shot down two RAF pilots out of the sky, killing one of the pilots. It did get a little hairy after that, but everyone including Sailor was let off. But maybe, just maybe, it was a good thing, and Sailor went on to fly over Dunkirk in May 1940, earning himself acehood and a distinguished flying cross in this battle alone. In August, Sailor commanded his squadron in the Battle of Britain. His strict command style paid off here. In just one day, his unit claimed 38 victories. A methodological pilot, Sailor even had a set of clear rules for fighting in the air. Of Sailor's 10 commandments, these are my favorite three. Number six, make your decisions promptly. It's better to act quickly, even though your tactics are not the best. Number nine, initiative, aggression, air discipline, and teamwork are words that mean something in air fighting. And 10, go in quickly, punch hard, and get out. These obviously worked for the Boer. He ended his fighting career in 1941 with 27 individual victories and 7 shared victories. Sailor was the RAF's leading ace in his time, though James Johnny Johnson bested his score later in the war. It's safe to say Sailor was more of a team player than Buelling, and certainly more social, known for throwing cabaret parties and hunt balls and rolling the dice if you know what I mean. More than that, he was, like many pilots, a bit of a celebrity, essential to the morale of the Allied Air Force and civilians alike. In December 1941, Sailor Milan was immortalized in a portrait by Cuthbert Ord. This right here, people, is a good looking man. Unfortunately, square jawed, courageous Sailor Milan met a bit of an undignifying end, perishing at just 53 from Parkinson's disease. Ioannis Agastos John Plagis was born in the British colony of Southern Rhodesia to Greek parents. While Plagis volunteered for the Southern Rhodesian Air Force at the start of the war, he was denied due to his Greek heritage. After the Italians invaded Greece in October 1940 and Greece joined the Allies, Plagius tried again, though now for the British RAF. 
In March 1942, Plagis was assigned to the defense of Malta, where his southern Rhodesian friend Doug Lego flew an early morning offensive against the Germans who were bombing the island's vital airfields. Plagis tried to stop Lego, who had not slept for over 24 hours from flying, but Lego hopped into the cockpit anyway, getting absolutely minced up by the Germans in the morning sky. Bailing out of his mortally wounded craft, Lego's parachute was either attacked or otherwise compromised, and he plummeted to his end. Pelagius sought revenge, vowing to shoot down 10 enemy planes. He scored the first of those just five days later, and then, on April Fool's Day 1942, downed 40 in a single day. Ha, nah, jokes, April Fool's, he only downed four, but this was enough for Plagius to become an ace and received the Distinguished Flying Cross, for which the citation read, with complete indifference to odds against him, he presses home his attacks with skill and courage. Before leaving for England, where he recovered from malnutrition, scabies, general fatigue, Plagius had avenged Lego, and after some action over France, Plagius flew in the invasions of Normandy, France and the Low Countries. He was knocked out of the sky over the Netherlands, coming away with only minor injuries and climbing right back into the fray. While Plagius' kill count was a little lower than the other aces mentioned in this video, he still claimed 16 confirmed victories, becoming the highest scoring southern Rhodesian and pilot of Greek heritage in World War II. Those four kills in one day are nothing to laugh at either. Like Sailor Milan, Plagius died young at 54 or 55, with sources saying he took his own life. The aces of World War II bathed in glory. They were celebrities and a lot of the time dexterous intelligence and courageous individuals, and for them, getting shot down didn't always mean death. Many of the aces in this two-part video evacuated their doomed planes and all survived crash landings, only to get right back into that cockpit. With that said, there were also many other aces and other non-ace pilots who met really gruesome deaths. Just think of Plagius' friend Lego, Imagine spinning through the sky, clawing at nothing, knowing full well that you are accelerating toward your own demise. Pretty grim. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this two part on the most heroic pilots of World War II. If you like this video and want to see more like it, like my previous videos, the heroic medics and most feared known soldiers, then leave your suggestions in the comment section below. And as always, just before you go, make sure you check out all those juicy links in the description below waiting for your clicks, where you can join other history buffs on the Discord and support the channel more than you already are by clicking on that Patreon link down below and helping us out just a little bit. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.